Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is creating a Doom Eternal style dash system. So let me just hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if I were to be moving forwards and press shift or dash, press shift again or dash, if I press shift again we won't dash as you can only dash twice before it needs to recharge but once it has recharged we can then dash once again. And this also works in any direction we are travelling so if I am strafing left or right we can also dash in that direction as well. We're just going to dash in the direction we are currently travelling in as you can see perfectly there. So this is what we're going over and making today a nice simple dash system which is inspired from the Doom mechanics but it can obviously be used in any kind of game you want to make. So without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. Also before we get into the rest of the video I'd just like to say we're trying to hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year so if you haven't subscribed already and you do enjoy the content that I make please do consider subscribing down below as it really does help me and the channel out more than you can imagine. So again that's the goal we're trying to hit let's see if we can do it. But let's get into this video and the first thing we need to do is create our input mapping. So what we're going to do is go to edit, project settings, go down to input and then we'll create an action mapping here. So if it's not open for you, just press the arrow to open the drop down menu, press the plus to add an action mapping, and I'm gonna name this one dash, as that makes the most sense for me. And the key bind I'm gonna use for this is left shift. As again, that is what it is in Doom Eternal, at least on PC anyway, obviously I believe it's circle on controllers, but I'm doing left shift. Now obviously if you've got your sprinting set up on left shift, you can do any button you want, so maybe you have to double tap W, which I'll leave a link in the description down below to a video where I show you how to double tap W to do something. Or maybe you want to have it on control or left mouse button, G, whatever button you want, just set that up in here. And the benefit of an action mapping is you can obviously also set up multiple buttons as well if you wanted. But without further ado, let's close this as we spoke about that quite a lot. So now we want to open up our character blueprint. Now you'll notice I'm doing this in first person. It doesn't have to be first person at all. I'm just doing that because again, Doom is a first person game. So for me, it's gonna be control space to open the content browser, go to content, first person, blueprints, BP, first person character. And we're gonna go straight to the event graph and find some empty space. The first thing we want to do here is we want to right click and get our dash action event, which we just created a moment ago. Then as of this, we're gonna hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that into pressed. And the branch is here because we want to check a value. The value we want to check is how many times the player has already dashed because again they can only dash twice before it needs to recharge. So if you don't want that recharge, that cooldown, you don't need to include this part here. So this is going to be an integer variable. So we're going to hit the plus variable in the bottom left down here, name this one dash used or dash times used or anything that makes the most sense for you. And we're going to change this from a boolean to like I said earlier an integer because an integer is just a whole number. So we're going to compile, save that, and we can leave the default value as zero. We're then going to hold control and drag this in to get it. Then we're going to get a not equal to, which is an exclamation mark equal for not equal. And we're going to connect that into the condition of the branch there. The value we're going to be checking is two. Is again, for me, I want it to be able to be used two times. So you can set this number to whatever you want. If you want the player to only use it once, set this as one. If you want it to be used twice, set it as two and so on and so forth. And now after this, false means it's been used two times already so we can't use it because again this is not equal to so it's the opposite. So false means we can't use it anymore so we don't want to do anything. True means we can continue to dash so we want to do the dash code. And this is actually very simple. We're going to come out of true and get launch character. So the code is pretty much done for us. And the launch velocity here is this is the direction we want to launch the character in. So it's velocity because that is both speed and direction. So that's how we're determining the direction too. So all we're going to do is right click, get velocity. So we're getting the velocity of the player because that's again going to get the direction that they're currently moving in. We're then going to right click the return value and split the structure pin because we only want to do the X and Y values. I.e. going forwards, backwards, left, right, diagonally, all those angles we want, but we don't want this edge because we don't want to go up. Because if you do that, if you then jump and dash, you are going to go absolutely flying into the middle of nowhere, just up at an angle you don't want to be going at. So that is why we're not doing the Z. What we're going to do is then drag out of X and make vector, connecting in the X and Y, but like I said, we're not doing the Z. And then out of the return value of this, we're going to get a vector 
multiplied by, and that will obviously then just be multiplied by a vector. What we can do then is right click on the bottom value, convert pin, and change it to an integer. And the value I'm going to put in here is 10. So what we're doing here is we're getting the current velocity of the player and multiplying it by the amount we want to dash by. So I want to make the player dash 10 times faster than they're currently moving. You can set this to 2, to 5, to 10, or 100, whatever it is that you want. But for me, 10 seems like a good value, and that's the value I was using at the beginning of the video. So just mess around with this value to get it perfect for you. Then we're going to connect alternatively that into the launch velocity of the launch character. And now we have our launch character and our dash system set up. However, obviously, again, we want to set it up so you can only use it a number of times as we've got here. So there's still a little bit more to do, but the dash itself is set up. Once we have dashed, we want to hold control to get our dash used integer we created earlier. And out of this, we want to get an increment int. So we're just going to be adding one to the integer and then setting it because we've used the dash once. So we're increasing it by one. We're going to drag out of this and get an equal equal putting this as two or again, whatever value you have here at the beginning. So how many times the player can use the dash. This is obviously a boolean return value so we're checking the value so we want to put this into a branch so we're going to hold down b and left click to get said branch connecting that in there like so and then what we want to do is false we don't want to do anything because they haven't used it enough times true however we want to recharge it because they've used it enough times so we want to put them on cooldown and then actually reset it so they can use it again so true is going to do another check first because also in doom the dash will not recharge while the player is in the air. You have to be on the floor. So we want to check that as well. So we're going to get the character movement from the top left components list, drag out of this and just get is falling. Don't type get is falling, just type is falling. We're going to get that and input that into the other branch I mentioned before. Again, hold down B left click, connecting into true and is falling going into the condition there like so. So now we have this one set up as well. So the player has to have used both dashes and be on the floor. So true, if they are falling, we don't want to do anything. But false, if they're not falling, we want to recharge. So we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that into there, setting this duration to two seconds. And then after this, we're going to hold Alt, drag in our dash used to set it, and set this back to zero. So we've used the dash zero times, which means the next time the player wants to dash, this will no longer be equal to two, so we can dash and the whole process will go through again. Now, a couple things to mention. I've set this delay here to two seconds. You can obviously set this to whatever you want. And I'll be completely honest, I don't know how long it is in Doom itself. And from the research I've done, it doesn't seem like anyone on the internet knows either. So it might be that it just is when you hit the floor, it recharges. If so, what you can do is just then don't have this code here to recharge and instead just get event on landed and then out of this set dash used to zero. So whenever the player hits the floor, it's going to reset back to zero. So if that's how you want to do it, do that. And another thing to mention is if the player is falling, that's going to obviously do nothing, but then that's never going to recheck to see if they've landed to then be able to reset the dash used. So this event on landed I just got, we want to keep. So if you didn't get it, get it now. And we're then going to connect that straight into this first branch we have after incrementing the dash used. So every time the player lands, we're going to check to see if they have used up all of their dashes. If they haven't, no worries, don't do anything. If they have, we want to see if they're still not falling because maybe they landed but then immediately started falling again. So if they're still not falling, we're then going to start the recharge. Or if you want it to be as soon as they land, it recharges. Instead of having to wait the two seconds as well, you can then just again connect that straight into the set dash used here instead. But this is how I've got it set up for my specific use case. But as you can hear, it's very easy to customize and change for your own personal needs. And so I'm just going to interrupt this video here for one minor detail I just found out while testing out after recording the video as well, is sometimes if you are in the air while you're dashing, when you land, you won't be able to recharge it. So a simple solution to this is go to our event on landed event here, hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that into there and the delay into the branch and just set this delay to something very small like 0.01. We can compile and save that. So all we need to do is just make sure there is a slight bit of latency after we land before going into resetting the code 
because what was happening was as soon as the player lands, the code is still saying it's falling, which means this would come off of true and obviously not reset our dash. So that's why we've done that. I hope that makes sense. If you see this gone in the rest of the video, don't worry, I've interrupted this video now after recording, but that is why. So thank you and I'll continue with the video. But once you've done all that, this is now the dash system fully set up and working for us. So we're gonna hit compile, save that, we can close this and hit play to test it out. So if I were to be moving about, let's hold W and press shift and press shift again. You can see we dashed perfectly like so and I have to wait two seconds before I can dash again, as you can see there. If I strafe left or right, this is also gonna work as well. So this is working perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What I've done is we've set up a Doom Eternal style dash system in which it, we can only use it twice and we have to recharge it. And also it will dash in the direction we are going in, whether that is forwards, left, back or right. And again, if I were to jump up and dash, it's not gonna actually go flying off into the middle of nowhere, as you can perfectly see there. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.